Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Today's episode will be a special one and you may ask why is it a special episode? Well there is actually no particular reason other than the project that we're going to be doing is very special. Now recently an addition to the game was made that I've been waiting to see for a long long time. We can now have coloured beacon beams and there are the well right as I pointed at them they disappeared that is a bug, there you go. We've also found out we can make beacon beams disappear just by looking up. Very strange. Actually, it looks like if you just look above a certain height. Oh, there's all kinds of strangeness going on here. <laughs> anyway, that doesn't matter. What we're going to be doing is a very special project. Check this out. I've got a load of materials here to do this. And what we're going to be building is a spectrum of the different colours that you can make with the beacon beams. Now, this is something I thought would be cool a long time ago. I'm not going to tell you quite what we're going to be doing, although I've probably given a lot of it away <laughs> with the uh, title of the video, which is something that I normally do. But anyway, I was having a look around the Hermit Town area, and that place is really full up. You know, wherever there's a little bit of space, it's not big enough for what we need, because I have 32 beacons here, and I want to place them all in a row. And this is just for a temporary structure, though. What we're going to do, first of all, is just to show you the idea that I have. And I think over here might be a decent space. This is what I had in my mind. This looks like a nice stretch of land that we can just use temporarily to place down some iron and some beacons as well. So we want 32 of these in a row. Let's go all the way over here to the to the tongue and just place down 32. So we'll be able to count by seeing the amount of iron that we've got left over here. And there's a torch in our way. We'll take that. And I'm excited. I've got to say I'm really looking forward to doing this. So that's 32. We need one extra iron on either end. And then what we're going to do is put it like this. So we're going to fill all of this up with iron, and that means that we can put a load of beacons in a row. Oh, and I've opened that one. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. I don't want to keep you here for too long. Let me just do the rest of these, and then we'll do the next thing. Well, that is not something you see every day in Minecraft, is it? 32 beacons in a row. That is quite the sight to behold. If we could uh, <laughs> actually behold it. There is some strange stuff going on in this pre-release. But yes, I have a lot of beacons here. If you are wondering where I got all of these from, I actually have a Wither Skeleton farm. We built it quite some time ago here on the server. It's been a long, long time since we've been over there. In fact, if you'd like to see it, leave a comment down below because I'd be happy to go back over there and show you the Wither Skeleton farm. But after I built that, I spent a long time over there, you know, collecting skulls. And then we fought 100 Withers in one episode and crafted ourselves 100 beacons. And of course, I never got around to using all of them, so we got them left over for an occasion like this. Now, I've been waiting a long time to do this. Of course, I've done it in creative mode, but here we are in survival on Hermitcraft, and we're going to change the color of the beacon beams. And yes, there you go, you can do that. That is an amazing addition to this game. But what we're going to be doing right now is actually creating a spectrum of colors. So, after this one, we're going to place two red, which I don't think makes it actually stronger. But if we put a little bit of orange on there as well, then it's going to go ever so slightly orange. And so after that, then we're going to do one red and one orange, like so. They actually look a little bit closer together. I think I did this different in the test world. Of course, I've already figured all of this stuff out. I think maybe what I did is put the orange in the middle and then the red on top. And now I need some building blocks to get up there. Let's do some iron, like that. Ah, there we go. Now we get the color spectrum thing going, okay. And so then after we have one of each, we then do one red and two orange. So I think that might be like this. Oh, I've forgotten what I've done already. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. I'll have to go back and double check. But then after that, we place one orange. And there we have the spectrum going from red to orange. So like we did before, orange is now like it is here where the red is. So we would put one of those down, then another color in the middle, which will be yellow. And then orange on top of it. So you can see the pattern is repeating, then we can do orange and yellow, and we are building ourselves a spectrum of colour. <laughs> it is ever so cool. So orange goes at the top, and then yellow at the bottom, and I do believe now it's time to introduce our next colour. Yep, we put yellow here, and then the next one will be green. So we swap these over, we go green, yellow, green. I've got a feeling I did that one wrong there. Is that correct? No, it's not, is it? <laughs> it's not correct at all. In fact, if we just copy the pattern we've already got here, you can see that there's four in a row, so this one should actually be the other way around. But it's going to take me a little bit of time to do this, just because I've got to double-check it 
as I go along. So let's just do the green and yellow one, and I'll do the rest off camera. Okay, so I think I got that right. So then it'll be green here. Yeah, look, I missed out the yellow by itself. So I think I'm starting to get the pattern of it now. Once you can stand back and look at it like this, you can see things repeating. So if we go over here and place four purple in a row, like that. Oh, I love these beacon beams. <laughs> They're ever so cool. You can see when we've got four in a row, we have uh, two on the side there and then one above. So if we put those two here, and then the one above needs the color before it, which is going to be green. So put that there and the purple above. Let's just break that and take a step back. So that looks correct. You can see it changing color. Um, we're actually missing something there, aren't we? We need a green block on top of this one as well. Okay, so let's just hop up and place that. And then step back and take a look at it again. And then we're going to need two of the next color on this side. And then one there and one there. That should be pretty straightforward. Two of the next color on purple on top. And then one to the side like that. There we go. So now we're doing the next one. We've got to place four of these in a row. You can see how it's coming together. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of this. I'll complete it. And it is going to be a sight to behold once it is finished. There we go. We've built ourselves a color spectrum. It really does look awesome. I really like this. I don't know why I thought I needed 32 beacons. I calculated all of this in a test world before. And I don't know. I just derped there. So we actually needed seven less beacons. So 25 in total. However, the one on the end is the same as the one over here. So 24 beacons in total this is using. But it really does look awesome. I love this. But this is just the first part of what we're going to be doing. Because what I want to do is actually just have a single beacon that has the spectrum. And that is why in my inventory you see here some pistons and some redstone and redstone repeaters. You've probably got a good idea what I'm going to be doing here. But uh, we're going to go to a different location because we're not going to be building this thing right here. I actually want to build it next to my house over there in Hermit Town. But there you go. We can build a spectrum with these beacons. So I'm actually going to take this down now. I will of course take a screenshot so I remember the order of all of these glass. But then we're going to be putting this in a single beacon over there. So I will be with you in a moment. It feels really strange to be tearing this down after we've built it. It's such a cool sight. Um, but as I was tearing it down, I realized that I forgot to take a screenshot of the color combination. And I felt like a right dummy. And then I felt like more of a dummy when I realized that, of course, I was recording the entire thing. So I could just play the video footage back, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we were almost done here. We're going to be moving over to the base, like I said, and uh, building this new beacon just underground. So it's going to come out somewhere in front of my building. And here is where it's going to go. Kind of like the perfect location, I think. I was looking around for places to put it, and I was thinking about the lawn over here, but the problem is we got the storage room down below. And then I thought it'd be really cool if the beam came through here as well. But unfortunately, this thing is two blocks wide in the middle, so it'd be off-centered, which always looks odd. But as I was looking around this place right here, there was an odd block, and it just kind of screamed at me because it's right in the middle as you're looking at this place. The path goes round to the side, it's next to the mailbox, there's an odd space for it, and it's kind of perfect. So that's where the beam is going to go, and that thing, the way it disappears, I'm pretty sure it's when the beacon kind of goes out of sight. And I'll tell you what that could be because of, it's because they don't render things that you can't see in the game anymore. So it's probably stop rendering the beacon, and that's why the beacon beam disappears. Interesting stuff. Maybe I just solved a bug for Mojang. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, let's go down here and have a look. We've got a little bit of space down here. What we're going to be building is a tapeworm. I do believe that is the correct term. So if you remember, we had those blocks above the beacon. I think there were three or four blocks in total. Uh, what we want to do is take all 24 different colors that we just created and have all of those blocks in a row and then have the pistons kind of push them around in a circle. So this thing is going to get updated every time the blocks move across and then it's going to change color. And then it will go through the spectrum of colors like I just showed you. And that is going to be awesome. But I think what I need to do is a little bit of building. We're going to be doing some redstoning. That's why I've got these pistons and redstone and repeaters with me. And yeah, a little bit of preparation and then I'll show you how this is going to work. So I just ran into a little bit of a problem. We have 23 blocks here, cobblestone blocks that is. They're representing where the glass is going to be pushed around. And the thing with a tapeworm is that you need one block in your circle to be free because the piston is going to push at the back here. That's going to move all of those along. Then this one's going to be free. This one at the side will fire. Then the one down the end, etc, etc. So we can't actually do it with an even amount of numbers. And what I think I'm going to do is make this one bit longer which means we now have 25 in the circle and just double up on one 
of the colors may be red or something like that which I know would be slightly off but I can't think of a way to do this with an even amount now maybe with the slime blocks there's a way uh, but as of right now I think we're just going to have to make that little sacrifice otherwise I'll be here for a very long time so the other little thing that I thought of as well was to actually put the part of the tape that goes over here three blocks wide like this because originally what I had done is put my track down the middle here and I realized it meant a piston would be pushing across where the beacon is so by doing it like this it means there's always going to be a transition of glass blocks to glass blocks directly above that which should make it a little bit nicer but now what I'm going to do is put the pistons and some of the redstone in place and hopefully we can get this thing going so we may have a little bit of a problem here when the blocks move the beacon beam shines through it for a split second now the problem there is that of course we're changing the colour of this beam and it might default to the normal one in between every time and you know what if that's going to be the case I am not bothered because I've had fun doing this and who knows someone might have a solution but this thing pretty much worked out first time let's go through the redstone in fact let's just turn this thing off for a second we can do that uh, by removing that redstone so I decided to power it like this this block here is going to get powered and then the Actually, I think this bit at the back here might be useless and that bit of redstone down there. I'll check that in a moment. But anyway, that's going to send the signal up and uh, power all of the pistons at the end here. And so we've got that on each side. And so we have some redstone going to each of them. So in the middle here, I've just made three repeaters. So the signal is going to come in from this side. That's also going to go to the first one that gets powered, which is the one down the back here. And then it goes off to the one on the left, then to this one, and then to the one over there. And that's it. So every time a signal comes through, that one pushes, then this one, then that one, and that one, and then they've made a full rotation. So the next thing for me to do is to actually remove all of the cobblestone and replace it with the glass. Now I've brought some regular glass with me as well, because not always did we use um, the full three colours that we can with each of these colours. So we're going to put those in between, and I don't think that affects the beacon beam, which is something I haven't actually tested yet. Anyway, I've got my uh, video on the other screen, so I can start removing the cobblestone and replace it with our glass. Okay, I've just finished placing down all of the glass and as soon as I've done it I realise I don't really have a way back into the middle so let's just break this now. I'm going to have to create a path to get into it because obviously we're going to be adjusting things but let's reconnect this redstone and fingers crossed this will go well but if it doesn't I don't mind. This has been a cool project. So let's see what happens. Oh, it does blink. It does blink. That is unfortunate, really. Oh, it's going in reverse order as well. I didn't even think about that when I was placing all of these. I guess they get pushed in this direction, so I just thought of doing them in that order, but of course, it's kind of going back to front. I still think this is going to be cool, and I think what I might do is run this on a slow timer, so this thing just activates every so often, and then whenever you're going past, it's always going to be a different colour beam, but you won't actually sit there and watch it change. Oh, that is a little bit of a shame, and that doesn't look right, does it? I've got a feeling the glass might actually be interfering with this a little bit. Not sure, not sure. Let's watch it go around a little bit more. Definitely didn't interfere that time. It's really hard to tell. It just looked odd for that one time, didn't it? Anyway, let's go and have a look at this from outside. Something's gone horribly wrong here. Look, some blocks are over there on the side, some blocks are over here on this side. Uh, but down that end it's fine, I think, yep. How that's happened I'm not really sure, and why it's done it I'm also not sure about, because it worked fine when we tested it with the cobblestone. Maybe we need more of a delay between each of these. I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Ah, oh, now they're all out of position as well, that is quite annoying. It's going to take a while to put that back in place, isn't it? I think I just figured out the problem. And I thought I'd solved it, and then it turned out I hadn't. So let me tell you about how I thought I solved it. Uh, I thought that the pistons were being extended for too long because of the delay that this repeater would add. So I added some sticky pistons with a block on top of them. That means that a one tick pulse is going to come out on the other side. But that didn't fix it, so I put in some furnaces and it's still not fixed. And at last I've realised the reason why is because the signal is actually going in the wrong direction. If it goes in the other direction, I think because of the way that I've aligned the pistons, um, then it's going to work. So the way we have it set up at the moment, when this block pushes all the way across there, uh, we need a gap at the end. And then when that one pushes from that side to that side, we also need a gap there as well. So if I rotate the pistons here to face the other direction and they fire in the way that they do, then we can have those corners filled in, I do believe. 
hopefully that makes sense. So what I have to do is just adjust this so it goes the other way around and this is the one that gets powered last. So we did it, I was right. It was the firing the pistons in the wrong order for the way that they were facing. And now it works. Awesome. We have one gap, which is always going to be over there. In fact, you can kind of see what it was doing then, except it fires in the opposite direction to the way it pushes the blocks. And is it still pushing them in the same direction? Yes, it is. Of course it is. <laughs> can only push them in one direction, unless we change the direction of the pistons. Anyway, time for me to stop rambling. I know you want to see this in action, so I'm just going to fix up all of the glass. Then we're going to go up top and have a look. We've got to be careful here. There is a creeper in Monkey Farm's garden. Oh, almost hit his horse. <laughs> and there is another one just over the hill here, I'm sure. I saw one. There he is. Let's swing around and hit him with the axe. Luckily, we have strength two in the area. Or well, strength one, even. So, it's a one-hit kill. And this thing, yeah, unfortunately, it blinks. Which makes me think I should run it on a slow timer so it changes, I don't know, every minute or so. Maybe a little bit faster than that. And that kind of ends this thing on a sad note. This was a really fun project idea that I had and it didn't quite turn out. However, I've since thought of other ways we could make this work, so I'm certainly going to be thinking about that for sure, because we might be able to do this without the blinking effect, which would be really, really awesome. But there you go. Oh, that one looks strange, doesn't it? What one was that? That was one around the greens. God, mobs are spawning everywhere here in Hermitown. Let's go down. So somewhere around the greens, it looks like maybe I, uh, I made a mistake. However, I did copy everything that we did before. I think it's just the glass. I think the glass interferes with some of the colours, which could be a thing. You know, this is new. It hasn't long been tested, and perhaps they didn't test it with some glass on top of other colours, so it causes some problems. But there you go. <laughs> Magical beacon. So this thing is now on a very slow timer, and I think people are going to notice it, and they're going to be like, OK, coloured beacon beam, that's cool. They're going to go off, they're going to go do their thing, and then they're going to come back later, and it's going to be a different colour. And that is awesome. So this project didn't turn out quite as expected, and this is a short episode today. If you're wondering why, the reason why is because I had a cool, special little project that I wanted to do. And also, as you're watching this video right now, I should be in Wales on a little bit of a vacation, doing some cycling, and uh, hopefully making a cycling vlog to show you as well. So I've had to record this episode way in advance to give you some videos while I'm away. But there you go. If you've enjoyed the episode, please do leave a like. You know it will always be appreciated. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you next time.